Hey guys, it's May May, and today I thought I would bring you along as I cut stamped images with my Scan and Cut DX. Now, why am I using my DX versus my CM350? I don't know. I just pulled this one out. I really didn't have a reason. I just went, here's one, and I put it on the table, and that's what we're going to do. This works with both um, Scan and Cuts. It actually works with any Scan and Cut you have. So, I have stamped, and I have a video showing you how I did this. I'll link that for you. I've stamped the images I want to cut out. I'm going to zoom in here manually like this. Do you see on the words how I have traced around the words? Okay. I do not normally use my scan and cut in this way. Normally, I would just cut, stamp my images and cut out my images. I don't really care to cut out my words because typically I make sentiment strips or banners or put them on punches or whatever. I don't usually cut out my sentiments. But you have two options. One is to trace around them so that the Scan and Cut knows you want to connect them together. And the other option is to use the SVG that you get for free with my stamp sets. All stamp sets that have an SVG, those SVGs are free. And just so you know, our graphic artist Sylvia is working on bringing out all the old ones we don't have. So since I'm not, I don't have an SVG and I've already stamped this, we're just going to do it this way. So I just traced around all of those. I just need something for the Scan and Cut to look at, you know, to see and say, oh, there's a line there. We want to keep this piece together. Now, I already have my mat loaded in my, sheet, my machine. That's just a habit I have. I just set it up, load the mat, and then I can stick down to it. And my mat is very, very super not sticky, which, by the way, is just a trait of Scan and Cut. Like, their mats are just not sticky. This one I have not um, added. I typically add some Zig 2-Way, but I haven't added it to this mat. This is a fairly new mat. Um, fairly unused mat, I should say, and so I have not added any of my Zig 2-Way to this one. I will at some point, and that'll help it, and I won't have to tape down, but for today, I'm adding a little bit of tape. Not the end of the world. One thing you do want to make sure of is that your tape is stuck down on the ends. If not, it can sometimes get stuck in the machine, like, and pull up, so that ought to be plenty. Now, let's talk about the actual machine. I know that's what you're ready for, so here's what we're going to do. We have some options up here. We can, I better, I want to go back one. Let me go back to this um, screen. This is the screen you would be on when you got started, okay? See where it has pattern and scan? Pattern is if you want to do a shape or something that's built into the scan and cut, which is something I love because it's a plug and play machine, okay? Or scan, we're going to scan. So I'm going to tap scan. Now my options are direct cut, scan to cut data, or scan to USB. I don't want to do these two because this is saving the scan that I'm doing, and I don't need to save it. This is a one-time deal for me, so I just want to direct cut. Now, here it says select a device to convert the scanned image to cutting data. I'm not going to be using Wi-Fi. I'm going to use my actual machine, so I'll tap the machine. And here it's telling me that it's going to scan. It's going to scan. Everything's cool. But at the bottom it says... If you want to change this from black and white to color mode, you can. Now, for me, stamps are going to be black and white. If I had already colored them, I might want to change that to color mode, but I'm going to leave it where it is. But if you need to change it to color, you tap the little wrench, change it to color, and say OK. But we're going to leave it in black and white. All right, now we can say start. And the scan to cut is going to feed the mat through, and it's going to scan everything on the mat. So it's important that you know Everything on the mat is going to show, and we're going to have to kind of dial it down and tell it what we want it to actually look at. So this is cool. You can see here that it has seen the mat, and it sees my stamps, and it sees my purple tape, and everything's there. I'm going to say OK. And now notice that it also sees all the little cut marks, paper, the little trash on my mat. It all shows up. So I'm going to use my stylus and these little arrows, and I'm just going to drag this in, and I'm basically closing the eye on everything except what I actually want it to see. So I'm just bringing this in. So I'm just going to do this little side and get rid of the purple tape and make sure just my images are showing, and they are. So now I can say preview. And if I need to zoom in to see this, I can hit the zoom. And it will preview and let me see what it's seeing. And that all looks really good to me. So I'm going to say, OK. And now I'm going to say, OK, again. Now, this is where you get that cool little die cut look, the offset around the image. If you want your image to cut directly around the line, don't change this. But for me, I want that little edge around it. So I'm going to tap this little circle button, and I'm going to create my outline distance. Now, it's a preset number. Like, I can only go to 0.04 first 
or 0.08. 0.04 is my favorite. Just one little tiny outline around it is all I really want. So I'm gonna say, okay. And now I can edit if I want to here. I do not want to edit, but I'll show you what's in there. You have all of these options where you can select an image and then you can delete it. You can trash it. You can um, do some coloring to it, like filling it in rather. All kinds of different options, which we can get to in other videos if you're interested. Okay, so now we're here and we're ready to cut. So I'm gonna say, okay. And now it will process and look, it shows me an outline of what it's gonna cut, which is really cool. Okay, and then it says, please select cut. And now I can tell it to start. Now, something really cool is it'll do a test cut if you want it to. It'll do like a little test on your cardstock. I don't need to do that. I already know we're good. So it's going to start cutting for me. Now, this is the automatic detection blade. This machine has the automatic blade. My old machine does not. So did you see how it detected the depth of my cardstock? That's pretty cool, right? <laughs> I think that is a cool feature. Also, if you watch my last Brother Scanning Cut video, how much quieter is this one? This DX is super quiet. My only issue so far with my DX is the feeding of the mat. It can be very persnickety about the mat, and some people say they don't have that issue, but my machine has had the issue where the rollers are a little slick and they really don't grab the mat very well. Um, but other than that, as long as I doctor up and I'm real careful with putting my mat in, we're fine. I love how quiet it is. I also love that it gives me a time frame of how long it's going to take. So if I was doing something that, like the other day, I did one that took about 15 or 20 minutes to cut. It was a lot. Then I would know if I had time to go do something else. So the cut is finished and I can say, okay. And now I can unload it with this little button right here. Now this is cool. I want to show you what it's telling me. When I hit the unload, it says, when unloading the mat, position of the pattern on the mat may shift from the scanned image. Okay, to continue. It's asking you that because it's telling you, if you unload this mat and load another image just like this on, you're probably not going to get it in the exact same spot. So I'm done. I don't need to worry about that. So I'm going to say, okay. And now my mat is unloaded. And now we can peel this away. I'm going to start by peeling away the background. Look at that, y'all. It's awesome, right? Scanning cuts, in my opinion, are expensive scissors. But if you use scissors like this, it's worth it. Because look how quick I was able to get that done. Even all my little sentiments and things. Now, all I have to do is go erase the pencil mark. And I even have sentiments cut out. So there you go. That's why I love it for stamped images. I've been telling you guys forever that it's my very favorite machine for stamped images. I don't need a die. I don't have to um, invest in dies. Because as you guys know, many times dies are more than the stamp set itself. And this machine is an investment, but it's a one-time investment versus every time you buy a stamp set, you have to buy a die. And also, you can upload SVGs to this machine. So, I mean, if you want to use the SVG, you don't even have to do the tracing, right? It just knows that it's there. So, there you go. That's how I use it. I hope you guys are enjoying these electronic videos I'm doing lately. A lot of them are coming at you. And there'll be more. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any. And if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up to let me know this is the kind of content you like. Thanks so much, guys. Bye now.